Hi, everyone, and welcome to Overleaf's webinar on enabling research and collaboration at institutions. I'm Marianne Baines, Chief Marketing Officer at Overleaf, and I will be your host for today's webinar. We appreciate you joining us. We have a great group of speakers lined up who will discuss their experience and insight on 21st century authoring at institutions. You're going to hear from John Hammersley, co-founder and CEO of Overleaf, who will provide an introduction to Overleaf and how we're being used in collaborative research and authoring. You will also hear from Helen Josephine on how Stanford University is facilitating collaboration with new tools and author services such as Overleaf. And then you'll hear from Aaron Dan Basu, who will talk about how faculty at the University of Canterbury are using tools such as Overleaf in their everyday research and teaching. We plan to have all three speakers present, and then we'll have a question and answer period at the end. So if you have any questions that come up during any of the presentations, please write those in the chat box on the right side of your screen at any time, and we'll get to those questions at the end of the webinar. So we're gonna go ahead and get things started with John Hammersley. John has always uh, been fascinated by science, space, and exploration in technology. And after completing a PhD in mathematical uh, physics uh, at Durham University in 2008, he went on to help design and build the world's first driverless taxi system, which is now operating at London's Heathrow Airport. John is now making it easier for scientists to collaborate and publish online as CEO and co-founder of Overleaf. And he was named one of Booksellers Rising Stars of 2015. He's a mentor and alumni of Bethnal Green Ventures Startup Accelerator in London. And in his spare time, he dances and occasionally teaches West Coast Swing. So John, I will pass it over to you. Thanks, Marianne. And hello, everyone. Um, I hope you can all hear me okay. And I'm gonna crack on. So. Yes, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Overleaf and a little bit about how cloud-based tools and services are helping collaboration um, amongst authors and students and researchers around the world. So, as Marianne said, I used to work on driverless cars. I'm a mathematician um, originally, um, and when I was doing my research, I was working with other people around the world. And as I'm sure you're all aware, the the internet has really been helping global scientific collaboration really develop over the past, past few years. You know, there are now more connections between more researchers, you know, based in universities in, in different countries all over the world. And this trend is being reflected in, in studies that have been done by different, different bodies. So this is a study conducted by the Royal Society, and they looked at the proportion of the world's papers produced with more than one international author. And they saw that this trend has continued to rise you know, pretty steadily um, over the last 20 or 30 years. And they also found that those papers with more collaborating authors tended to have higher citation accounts and tended to have been more widely shared within the literature. And these trends aren't just on an international scale. The NSF did a similar piece of research and found um, that the proportion of articles authored from multiple US institutions has also been increasing over the past 20 or 30 years. But if you've ever written a paper or ever written a collaborative grant application or a research report, I'm sure you'll appreciate that it's not the easiest process in the world. I, I love PhD comics. This is a great one, I think, just illustrating some of the challenges that two people have collaborating even within the same department. And we've all I'm sure got folders stuffed full of files with file names similar to that, that one in the bottom right. And what are some of those problems that authors see? So one of the one of the real obvious ones is just creating multiple versions of the same document. So you end up with endless copies on your computer, on another computer, on, on someone else's computer. And you have long email chains passing these files around. Um, it can be difficult to, to maintain formatting and typesetting, especially with different people copying and pasting in um, content from different places. And then maintaining references and going through rounds and rounds of revisions just keeps adding to the, to the com complexity. And this affects not just the collaborative process between authors, but also that collaborative process between reviewers and publishers and readers to get a research paper out and complete um, from you know, from conception through to publication. 
And this isn't just research papers either. So, you know, for example, a student's thesis needs to be written, needs to be reviewed, needs to be published, and, and needs to be distributed. And all the way, all the way through, there are these individual copies of that paper going through, going through this process. But the cloud allows this to change. So the cloud allows you to put the document at the center and give different people access to it at different times and with different privileges to do the jobs that they need to do. So whether this is authors collaborating together during the conception and during the writing of the paper, whether it's reviewers collaborating together to review the paper and provide feedback to the authors, or whether it's publishers and editorial teams collaborating to provide um, feedback on and corrections on, on layout and formatting, or whether it's simply readers accessing the latest version of the document and making sure that they have the, the most up-to-date copy when they come to read it. And this is it, what Overleaf's doing. So Overleaf is an online collaborative writing platform that makes it easy for, for researchers, students, faculty, and, and teachers to collaborate on the different documents that they need to write. Um, you simply write your paper on the left-hand side and see a typeset version of that paper appear on the right-hand side according to whatever template it is you're using. So here it's a, a two-column research article um, that, that's being collaboratively authored. So what is Overleaf doing you know, with this collaborative writing tool? So I think one of the big benefits, one of the big benefits that we found when we used it with our lab and with others was that you just have that one version of the document. You don't email files back and forth. You simply send someone the link to their paper, link to this, this paper, and they can edit at the same time. Um, because it's based on LaTeX or LaTeX, and the typesetting is done automatically in the background, so you see that typeset version whilst you're going. Um, because it uses LaTeX, you get automatic reference styles and citations and links, and many of the benefits of, of that software built in. Um, we also added things like track changes, um, real-time commenting, and all the sorts of features that you need in an editor in order to be able to not just author it, but also to review it. And then it's worth saying, finally, that there's no local software installation required. You simply go to a web browser, um, go to overleaf.com, and you can start writing straight away. And, and it's really grown you know, really remarkably. So over the past three and a half years, we've seen nearly five million documents created on the service by about 500,000 authors um, and those are, are spread all over the world so not just concentrated in one particular country but really distributed in many different places and you know this really grew as a sort of grassroots effort so this was you know authors starting to write their papers and starting to share those papers with others and bringing other collaborators in and those collaborators then working on other papers and, and bringing others in as well. And you know, we now see through some of the tools we provide to universities, you know, that these um, these users really do, you know, go across many different fields and many different disciplines. And we also have students at all stages of their career. So, in this example from an institution, you know, students all the way from undergraduates all the way up to the professors and the lecturers, um, and everything in between. Um, but what I, what's quite exciting from my perspective is that it's not even just undergraduate students. We go, we go earlier than that. We have school students using Overleaf, um, such as the Nano Ninja. So this is a great group of, of seventh and eighth graders in the US who used Overleaf as part of their robotics project. So they built a robot and they competed with it um, in many rounds of competitions out of school. And as part of that competition, they had to write up a engineering notebook um, that recorded their journey. And they wrote that engineering notebook on Overleaf and published it on the site so that other teams from next year or the year after can use this as an example to help them write their engineering notebook and help them be inspired by what the Nano Ninjas did. And they wrote into us and we, you know, we, we got in touch with them and they, you know, they, they said you know, they really enjoyed using it and, and they enjoyed the fact that they could create a professional document really easily um, in the cloud and all collaborate together on that document. Now, the more traditional use, which is what we started out using it for and what we, I guess what we expected people to use it for was research papers. So we have many researchers using Overleaf for their research papers. This is an example of a, a 62 co-author paper that was written on Overleaf um, by all those authors. Um, but it wasn't just written on Overleaf because of the work we've been doing with publishers 
It was also submitted directly to the journal through Overleaf, and we passed the files behind the scenes so the author had a really seamless transition from writing the paper to submitting it to the publisher. So this is something we're now doing um, with a number of different publishers around the world, is providing this alternative submission route so that the author can very quickly, at the push of a button, send their files to the journal. And again, not just to journals, we're also working with author services and repositories such as the archive and the bioarchive and institutional repositories to make it easier for created works on Obelief to be submitted to the, the place they need to get to. And it's a really simple submission process um, which is designed to be essentially push button and we include various checks if we need to and various metadata transfer to try and ensure that this is an integrated solution as we can. Um, we're working with a lot of different publishers, so publishers ranging from um, the large traditional publishers to some of the new open access publishers, but also new and innovative services like, like the BioArchive, like Figshare, like Zotero, um, and integrating with as many different services as possible to sort of provide that joined up um, author experience all the way through. And as one quick case study um, that we recently published on our site, so F1000 Research is a life sciences journal. They couldn't previously accept latex submissions, um, and now they get around 10 to 15% of all their submissions coming directly through Overleaf um, from authors who've written their paper on our service. So I mentioned earlier that we had a large grassroots effort of, of you know, authors really collaborating with others and helping to share Overleaf you know, with their colleagues and with their peers. And, Actually, that's led to what we call the advisor program. So we had a lot of really enthusiastic um, students and researchers from particular institutions who would get in touch to say, you know, we're, we're encouraging um, people to use it on campus. Would you mind if we ran a workshop? And of course, we, we were delighted that they wanted to do that. And so we've created the advisor program to help support them at their institution and provide them with, with some help and, and a free upgrade on their account so that they can most effectively sort of help share this with with others. And this really led us on to then, you know, this, this use at different institutions and the number of users we had at institutions around the world led us to create the institutional program. Um, and I'm not really going to talk about this today because I thought I would leave it to Helen and to Aaron to give you their perspectives on it as well. So that, that is all from me. Thank you very much for listening. All right. Well, thank you, John. That was a great overview of Overleaf and a great start to the webinar. Uh, again, if anyone has any questions for John, please write them in the chat box to the right of your screen, and we will get to them at the end of the webinar. But moving right along, we're now going to hear from Helen Josephine, who's the head of the Terman Engineering Library at Stanford University, serving the students and faculty of the School of Engineering. She is the subject liaison to the Electrical Engineering Department, the Aeronautics and Astronautics Department, and the Management Science and Engineering Department. So Helen, I will now pass it over to you. Great. Thanks so much, uh, Marianne and John, for an, inviting me to talk about Overleaf and how we've rolled it out at, at Stanford. So just a few words first about um, the department. Uh, so I work in the term in engineering library, which supports the School of Engineering. We have about 250 faculty, um, nine departments. We're primarily a graduate program, as you see, about 4,000 grads and only about 1,000 undergrads. Um, of those nine departments, six of them rank in the top of the uh, departments in the country, and three of them are ranked number one. So we pull a lot of students internationally to our school, and they are coming with a lot of expectations about what's available, as well as they are expected to come with the tools that they need to do their studies. And that is kind of the gap that we discovered. Because um, LaTeX is fairly prevalent at Stanford, it was invented here by a faculty member, Don Newth, in the computer science department. And it's required in many departments and programs. There are templates available for theses, for assignments, reports, but they're not that easy to find. And some students come here and not 
don't know anything about LaTeX, but then they're expected to use it. When I did an initial review of the potential users, I looked, of course, at the undergraduate students, and two of the largest majors are in the sciences, computer science and human biology. And if you look at all of the graduate programs, including those that would be not in the School of Engineering, so physics, chemistry, biology, over 50% of the grad students are in some kind of STEM discipline. So that's potential of a lot of students that could be using a program like LaTeX. I did a quick search of our own library, our own web pages at, at the university. The first link is to a page that I created for the Stanford University Libraries to highlight what is LaTeX, what is BibTeX, sort of basic questions and answers. And that site was getting so many hits. It was clear that people were seeking information. Also further down on the same page as you see a link to uh, writing your thesis using the LaTeX template. So there's some information that's useful on this page and some that's out of date. One of the things I found curious and out of date uh, was a page written by a, f a famous former student um, when he was a student here. So this was authored by Sergi Brin, and he was proposing a way to use HTML and LaTeX together. So I thought that was kind of curious, a curious oddity. So uh, how I got started on Overleaf was I went to a, a conference in the U.S. called the Charleston Library Conference which is a, a venue that unites both the publishers and the librarians. So it's mostly acquisitions librarians, but it's also a place to learn about new things that publishers and uh, support of libraries happens. At one of these uh, meetings, uh, John was there and he talked about the fact that they wanted to try doing uh, trials for academic institutions. So I jumped right on that because I knew that there was a need for a tool that would help the students with formatting their papers in LaTeX. Initially, I did a survey to sort of gauge interest to find out what the, some of the tools they were already using. This was a kind of a small survey because it just went to the departments within the School of Engineering, but it gave me a sense of how many people out there were already using a LaTeX editor, what they liked about it, what they didn't like, and when John helped me look at the results. He commented that only two of the responses were even um, cloud-based tools. So most people were using a LaTeX editor locally on their own computer, but they weren't able to share and do the, the kind of editing that you can do with Overleaf. So again, we learned something from that that was very useful to move us forward. So we decided to go for a one-year trial because we felt that we wanted to give the students enough time to actually work on a longish project. So a three-month trial or a six-month trial really wouldn't cut it because some of these projects go on for a little bit longer than that. We wanted to know several things. Um, looking at tools to enhance disciplinary research, uh, we were recognizing that there were already multiple approaches in place. So we wanted something that would work with what they were already used to working with. Uh, a tool that would appeal to all levels of expertise, from the very beginning person to someone who knows all the commands by art already. And to provide a tool to bridge across disciplines and teams. So sometimes an advisor was not that familiar with LaTeX, and two people on the team were, and there was a lot of reformatting, moving documents, into Word or into PDF and then bringing them back, which is very confusing. So these were the, some of the things we were looking to do. John showed this page earlier, so we ran a one-year trial and we did a lot of advertising on our own website about it, letting people know what the features were and what would be the advantages of joining. And of course we got a lot of people who said, no, I don't want to join something else, but it was, just try it, just try it, you know, it would be easy to back out if you don't like it. On our home page, we have a, um, an area where we have little ads that run, so we ran that also to highlight what was happening, and then if they did a search, 
they would p pick up my blog post to give them more information. So our first year trial data. So based on our confirmed users, these were users who already were using Overleaf or at that time Rightla Tech. And then we announced in January that we were having the one-year trial. And then we, we watched all the users during that first year of the trial. And we had a, an amazing uptake of new users. And throughout this period, we also did a couple of surveys. So I'll be talking about those in a, in a minute to uh, let people know how they were using it and what kind of enhancements they would like. The first thing we did, which was wonderful, was to make easy self-registration. So it was, it was no management overhead on my part. And if you've ever run a trial before and you had to intervene and individually enroll people, you know what I'm talking about. In this case, it, they just registered with their valid Stanford email address. And if they did go to the site and Overleaf would detect that they were from a Stanford IP address, this screen would come up to suggest, OK, you're at Stanford. You're running a trial. Just, claim, just click this button to be part of it. And that made it really fabulous. We also created a custom Stanford portal, which has been improved, which is great. And uh, we gave them, once they logged in, as you see here, I'm logged in, uh, the overview, a quick start, templates. So we kind of give them places where they could get started. Under the templates are many of the Stanford template, like the template for the Stanford PhD theses, but also templates for uh, NSF grants um, and various uh, I, IEEE publications, SPIE publications, the ones that I know the students are using a lot. So we put those right up front for them to get access to. In the help and FAQs are links to many of the fabulous tutorials that are already available from uh, Overleaf. So um, as I tell them in the blog post, if you're new to this, you want a quick overview, uh, you know, go to the uh, Overleaf help screens and watch the videos that they've created because I really explain it clearly. Throughout, we were monitoring usage and uptake. So these were some analytics to track number of projects. At this point, we only had 450 licenses. I get uh, reminders of these metrics every month to go and look to see how the usage has uh, increased, which I really like. Uh, the email that I get uh, highlights how many have signed up in the previous month and what kinds of students they are, those doctorals, undergrads, postdocs, what departments they identified themselves as being from, and uh, how many are actually in there working on their projects. Of course, August is a slow month for us because there are no classes, but there are a lot of grad students here working and taking advantage of these tools. So we have had quite a number of signups over the summer, more, more than I expected, actually. So our first, uh, we did a survey then in October to last year, uh, 2015, to find more out more about our users. Um, and these were actual users of Overleaf. So working with John, designing the survey, and then it, the survey actually came out from Overleaf. and. Uh, using Qualtrics, and they, then they could share the results with me. So I could see which department they're from. And of course, uh, somewhat surprised that we had other departments showing up, like the School of Education. And um, within Humanities and Sciences departments, there would be schools like um, Yes Physics and Biology and Chemistry, but also Economics and Sociology. So it was really starting to span a lot of more departments than I thought initially would be using the tool. I've got a few slides here of some of the feedback uh, on the survey. And what surprised me was the number of people that took the time to give us this kind of rich user feedback. Uh, I think 
uh, over 60% of the responses had uh, written comments in addition to just ticking boxes. But it's clear that it really made a difference in um, being the portability of a cloud-based tool since they could use it anywhere on campus and with international collaborators. The next slide talks about more about the collaboration, the fact that there, it reduces the barriers between the advisors and the students. If not everyone was at the same level of understanding, they could still edit and comment on the documents. And then this uh, response here talked about the fact that they've tried to do something, perhaps with Google Drive, which didn't work out as well for them. So they were really pleased to have this kind of templated version of LaTeX to use uh, in doing both the equations and algorithms than trying to jerry-rig something in Google Drive, which wasn't working at all for them. Writing and research papers, I think it's pretty clear that that was beyond the usage, with, this was the main usage I had anticipated, and it was really uh, useful. And I was surprised that more people were using it for collaboration uh, in more variety than I thought in, initially. On that survey last year, we asked for some of their feedback on what Overleaf could be doing. and. Um, Many of these they've already worked on and improved, like the Git integration and the faster updating of the PDF preview. We're still wanting to include more Stanford-specific and departmental templates as we're able to get them and then add them right to our page, as well as encouraging more departments and professors to use this tool in their classes. So I'm interested to hear the other panelists talk about um, how they've integrated that more at their university. So my future plans are to do another uh, user survey in October. Um, I want to um, try to get more feedback from advisors, try to get some students here to volunteer to be in the advisor group. And I want to know more about the kind of local events they would like to help them with the tool. Should we do workshops? Do they really just need drop-in help sessions, or are they fine? They don't need any, any, any help from me on this. John mentioned briefly the integration with other research workflow tools, which is something that's really important to me. Um, I'm also the Mendeley uh, champion on campus, and having now that integration between Mendeley and uh, Overleaf is, is terrific. I'm, putting together a small presentation on all these various researcher workflow tools and how they can work together, such as GitHub and the Open Science Framework, as well as Mendeley and uh, Overleaf. So as that progresses, I can just see it's just going to be more time saving for the authors and the um, researchers. This uh, direct submission to journals and repositories with the Journals and Services link right on the editing page is fabulous. Um, as John mentioned, they have so many links to the publishers themselves as well as the online repositories, and I'm seeing that as another uh, selling point with uh, getting students to try this out. So our current usage, um, last time I checked, which was a couple days ago, uh, we have over 3,000 Overleaf users here at Stanford, and that was, uh, you know, a huge increase just since the start of this particular year. Our classes have not started yet. We start late in September, so I'm anticipating a lot of students signing up toward the end of the month. Uh, but the number of projects and collaborations is more than I could possibly have imagined happening, and it's definitely one user or a group adopting it and then telling their five best friends and off they go. <laughs> so in summary, we have enabled collaboration not only on campus between these various departments, 
Again, the School of Medicine was another uptake of Overleaf that I didn't anticipate, and there are even some users over in the Graduate School of Business. The integration with the other researcher workflow tools will make it even more important, and the facilitation of the journal article submissions. We get a peek at some of the collaborations on our uh, metrics hub, and this is uh, during the past week, and it gives me nice little colors, which schools we've been doing the most collaboration with, as well as the other um, information on which departments. So these two quotes really summarize, I think, the usefulness of the tool to our students and faculty who are working with researchers all over the world and really need a tool that will help them um, with all of their uh, collaboration partners. I've got my email address here. If, if anyone wants to contact me directly, I'd be happy to share some of my, our research findings. And I wanted to just to show our little Overleaf was running a uh, promotion last year with their little Overleaf ducks. So a box of ducks arrived and I had to make a little sign uh, on our information desk to let people know uh, that they should look here for more about Overleaf. So I'm going to pass this on to the next presenter. Sure. And um, that's, that's great. All right. Thank you so much, Helen. That was sure. awesome. Thank you. It sounds like you guys are are doing some great stuff at Stanford, and it was good information on how the integration's been going for you guys. So thank you for that. Again, any questions for Helen, please write them in the chat box on the right side of your screen, and we will get to them at the end of the webinar. But next up, we're going to hear from Aaron Dambasu. Aaron is a physician, epidemiologist, and is a senior lecturer at the University of Canterbury School of Health Sciences. He teaches epidemiology and environmental health sciences and is the program coordinator of the environmental health at the School of Health Sciences. And we're also happy to say that Aaron is an Overleaf advisor. So Aaron, I will pass it over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Marianne. And uh, thank you particularly, John. And, uh... Um, Helen, it's just absolutely fantastic to read uh, and watch what you've been doing. Um, I, in this presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal take and what we're doing um, overly here at the uh, University of Canterbury, my research group and my students. And uh, part of that is driven by the kind of a philosophy that, uh, you know, uh, that, that builds around using free and open access tools um, for our research and teaching. So. Um, well, to start with, um, I'll just give you a very, very quick overview of, as to where we come from in why we are embracing um, Overleaf as a tool, um, as, as, as a great instantiation of how a web-based free open access text can make a big difference in how we work. And, um, you know, one of the impetus for doing this kind of work came from and it's not new to use uh, distributed open access freedom as uh, in, in the context of academe from where we are coming from is uh, Rabindranath Tagore, the uh, Indian Nobel laureate. And in 1900, when he was like uh, about a 30, 39 years old, he wrote a beautiful poem where he uh, talked about where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments. You can quite clearly see that there were kernels of his, um, his ideas of a world that he wanted to live in, which was kind of um, you know, unfragmented, where your productivity is fearless, where you have the free and open distribution of knowledge. You know. But in his time, you know, they didn't really have the tools to make that happen in the sphere of knowledge dissemination. We are very fortunate to live in a time when we can have this. One of the things that I'd like you to think about when we think in terms of working in a mind which is um, free of fear is, you know, lots of anxiety. Uh, for many of the tools that we use in our regular, say, research or teaching or writing up can be quite cluttered. You know, we have to think in terms of 
um, formatting it or otherwise writing it, the content and the challenges. This builds anxiety, but what about a tool that is so effortless that you keep on working at it, it automatically saves uh, your whatever you uh, wanted to do. Um, you can write in free text and you get a beautifully formatted uh, standardized document that gets built on on the side. And then in a click of, um, um, you know, a, a, just by a click of a mouse, you can send this document to anybody in the world and can bring everybody and collaborate it. So all of these kind of take away uh, the, the anxieties, the fears, the, um, the, the fettering around uh, working with documents and, and, and leave you with a process of working that's as organic, as free as possible. The second thing that makes it happen and where overlay particularly becomes important is in fostering freedom and openness. This is uh, Satine Berners-Lee tweeting at the, on the eve of London Olympics. But the wave is for everyone. So, you know, a tool that at once is built on the backbone of free text, um, LaTeX, but it adds a layer of like, um, you know, a, a rich text formatting um, opportunity for anyone who is not quite familiar with LaTeX but can still work at it, sits on the web so that it brings everybody and you can collaborate and build, um, uh, you know, beautiful collaborations and effective collaborations with your colleagues and students and everybody else. How beautiful can that be? And this is where I, 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 I say that, you know, Overleaf as a tool is like, um, you know, one app that rules them all. It's kind of a Swiss army knife that helps you to build your um, documents. You can write your presentation. You can even write, um, you know, process diagrams, flow diagrams. Um, it, it can virtually replace um, your word processing needs. It can replace your uh, need for a presentation software. As a matter of fact, this um, uh, presentation was built on uh, on Overleaf. I did not use any other uh, any other tool to write this. So it's very best. It's free. It's got a, a nice interface. And here I can show you how I use Overleaf for teaching. Over here, for example, I'll show you that there are three um, three topics. I've got three students. I mean, I've got many students. I mean, here we are showing you like two students who are working on two two uh, projects. And what happens is this: that I can um, I can watch them how they're how they're writing, and uh, you can see that you know uh, you know people edit the documents, and you can give a timestamp in which they're uh, they're editing the document. You can see how they're progressing. You can click on these links, and you you will be taken to a document where you can co-create and co-edit the document with the students. You can pass comments. It's really really very very useful. Another thing, for example, is this that um, you can see. You can use Overleaf for collaborative editing, which is another um, very important uh, way in which we are working. Here, for example, you see um, you know, uh, an, an Overleaf uh, pane um, for a paper that, that uh, I'm writing with one of my, uh, one of my uh, supervisors. He's doing a master's degree, master's thesis now. You can see that on the, uh, the right-hand side in the pane, uh, the contents of his thesis has been built in the center, he's writing the populations and methods and all that other work. And on the left-hand side is a, is a file manager where, where he can put in his files. And the work gets done over here. The presentation of, uh, of, of a content will be over here. And when we are ready, we can easily submit it to journals and services. We can share it. And we can change and track the version changes. There's, you know, we, it, it, makes, it makes your life so much more easier. And uh, we can scale up with as many people as we as we want. Uh, we can bring in um, bring in people, and we can get um, get things organized this way. Another thing which is very important is um, using Overleaf for presentations. So, in fact, you can take the whole thing, entire document. You can leave it over here, and then you can style it so that it becomes um, it it either becomes a matter of um, writing a paper in the form of a journal article or a report, or you can use the same document um, to be uh, ported as a presentation, as we have been doing um, with this particular one. So um, how um, Overleaf has started to fit with the kind of workflow that I have developed over the last couple of years for both me, my students, and many of my collaborators 
is this that a lot of our ideas um, are actually gathered over a number of different sources. For example, you know, just plain thoughts or plain write-ups, musings um, that get written in the form of um, you know emails or plain texts in uh, maybe documented in a um, in a mobile device, um, emails and everything else that that we get to read, reading blogs, um, getting raw data, and then analyzing the raw data, texts that are uh, picked up uh, from journals and books and stored in reference management systems. Everything gets routed to a clean, plain text document. We also use what is known as a Jupyter notebook, and a Jupyter notebook is one in which you can um, run data analysis, write um, scripts. And then when it comes to presenting it to the others and bring in collaboration, uh, you know, we, uh, we put everything like add references um, and then uh, add collaborators, route everything to an overleaf document and then widely distribute it to wherever we want to distribute it. We bring in the collaborations and then there's a cycle that gets built in that the collaborators edit on overleaf and then um, sometimes the collaborators can also, if they want, they can, uh, they can write on the plain text, but using a, a Git bridge and using uh, tools like Pandoc, everything gets done. Um, you know, we, we share documents between Overleaf and, and, and the plain text. So what happens is eventually is this, that Overleaf becomes a center of um, kind of productivity when it comes to pushing it out to other people. So uh, this is how we've been using this. There have been some unexpected uh, benefits that we have seen of this way of working. And um, what we have seen is that, that many students have commented that they find it very useful um, to see that their final product gets built while they're working on their thesis. I had a 56-year student um, who's working at the moment um, um, studying uh, migrant health. And he had never ever thought of uh, writing anything in, in LaTeX. He had never heard about LaTeX. Um, and we got him started um, writing his master thesis um, using Overleaf. And uh, he not only has picked up the skills of writing it, because it, you know, using Overleaf made it extremely easy for him to, um, to, to write his, um, write his uh, 200 page master thesis on his, uh, on his documentation, but also he is, he, you know, we could take this opportunity of teaching him snippets of even our programming uh, through, the, um, through, the, through the editing pen in Overleaf. How? Because Overleaf gives you a, um, a very nice messaging option, which can use that, and you can actually enable that two people uh, sitting in two different parts of the city in two different rooms can still look at the same document and can, um, can make those changes. So actually, um, you could use um, Overleaf as a uh, co-creating, collaborating tool, and that makes it a very, very powerful uh, teaching tool as well. Um, we have used um, Overleaf in other, uh, other contexts as well, like incorporated Overleaf into the Moodle um, uh, learning management system that we have in this university. So what we do is this, that we take the uh, take the PDF that um, Overleaf creates, or the, or the, or the uh, link share, that uh, Overleaf gives, and what you do is this: that you use that uh, shareable link into a um, into a an embeddable uh, embedded unit in a learning content management system, and students can immediately um, um, start looking at the at the document and can uh, can uh, contribute. Last year, we um, organized a, a workshop thanks to um, Mary and Shelley Miller, um, and uh, we had um, John Lees Miller who was very uh, kindly came and uh, they organized again um, using the, the web-based medium, using a webinar format. And uh, we had a lot of our colleagues who got interested. It was organized by the research committee of the College of Education. And, uh, you know, afterwards we had quite a few students and uh, colleagues who came and asked me, well, um, can we use this? And uh, I'm pretty sure that there have been uh, quite a bit of interest in doing this. So in summary, I think um, we have found in our practices that Overleaf is an extremely efficient and a versatile tool for teaching courses, um, supervision of individual students, writing grant projects, writing collaborative documents, um, both as a standalone product, 
but also if you combine it with other kinds of tools that are available, for example, using a Jupyter notebook or um, you know combining it with things like um, a Pandoc, which helps you to combine with uh, Markdown um, formatted texts um, uh, to um, to Overleaf, it becomes an extremely powerful um, workflow um, for um, academic productivity work. Um, I think I'd stop here. I'm, I'm very happy to take questions and uh, observations. Thank you, Gaur, very much. Excellent. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, it's really good to see how, how you guys are using Overleaf there. Uh, we're now going to go into some of the questions. Uh, and if we don't get to all the questions, uh, not a worry, because we're going to have John, Helen, and Aaron answer them after the webinar, and we're going to send those questions and answers out to everyone. We're also recording this webinar, and we will be sending a link of the recording uh, to you all for you to share with your friends and colleagues as well, if you would like. So uh, the first question is actually for Helen. Um, Helen, uh, it says, has using Overleaf created time savings for university staff, and how would I influence the, doc the doctoral studies school to use this? Great question. Um, one of the cases uh, that's really interesting are two of uh, librarians, one from the social sciences uh, bibliographer and the other government documents bibliographer. They submitted uh, an abstract to one of the ACM publications and their abstract was accepted and then they were told that you need to submit your uh, conference proceedings in our LaTeX format and they went what what's that <laughs> so they were one of the first people that I knew personally to uh, venture off and to start using uh, LaTeX to to submit their paper to ACM so and they were very pleased with how it went um, as far as time saving among the staff I think the support that I've given is pretty much just a gentle nudge in the direction of if you really want the details on how to use this tool, look at the videos and follow along on some of the blog posts. And I'm also very looking at the the, the blog posts that um, Arun has created for his classes, um, uh, Introduction to Overly Part 1 and Part 2. I'm thinking of trying of talking to him about adding that to my page and linking out to to his instructions. I find that the, the students are really the ones who have moved this onto campus. I uh, had some reluctance from faculty in my original uh, inquiry in December of 2014, primarily because they couldn't see the value of it in the collaborative sense. They already had LaTeX on their desktop. They were quite happy with what they were doing, which was fine. I kept telling them that's fine. This tool is for those perhaps who want to do collaboration with others who aren't as LaTeX savvy as you are. Um, so rather than letting their discouraging comments uh, make me rethink my, my game plan there, I just said I don't really need their approval to move forward with this. It's really something that I think is useful for the students. When it came time to actually move it from the trial to an enterprise subscription, yes, then I needed approvals from uh, my boss as well as the university librarian for, you know, to, to do the contract. But by then I already had so many testimonials and so many students using the tool that they could really see the value. So that's how we came to having it as a institution-wide subscription. Okay, that was great. Hopefully that answered your question. If if not, feel free to, to type in another question here. But um, Aaron, we have a question for you. Uh, what has been uh, the response from your colleagues and from students on your use of Overleaf or you know collaborative tools like that? Yeah, I think I'm, I've been uh, rather fortunate because, um, uh, well, um, also partly because since I started using it as a 
as an instructor bringing in the students and uh, teaching them and holding some of the hands. So um, students and colleagues have generally taken it to very, very kindly. So which is the reason why, um, uh, first with the students, of course. With the students, what happened was that, uh, you know, I trialed it for a, for a class um, of, of course, uh, mature graduate students uh, who were taking a research um, methods course. And uh, most everyone found uh, initially, there were some hiccups. They couldn't understand it. They, it was certainly a very different way of um, working because they were habituated to use Microsoft Word and EndNote and things like that. But once they started using this, um, most students would not like to go back to, the, to old ways of working. So that was quite interesting. The other thing, response that I had was then I started creating uh, templates and giving them out. And then I, I initiated the, uh, a paper or transferred the um, the data results from another paper and then put them into um, Overleaf and then shared it with, with my colleagues. And they liked it. And one of the reasons I think that we started really using um, Overleaf for, for collaborating paper writing now um, and kind of ditched uh, Google Docs for the same purpose is because one of our colleagues uh, spotted that there was somebody else, I mean, there were some issues about um, privacy. Uh, uh, you know, concerns in, uh, in in Google Docs, which is not a case uh, in, in Overleaf because uh, of very tight integrations between how uh, you allow, um, you know, people in. So that kind of helped. Uh, and of course, the idea that you can see a very neat PDFized um, um, paper developing uh, was also very, very useful for, for most people. So yes, overall, I had good um, good responses, but there have been questions. That is, how do I do this? How do I not do that? Which is the reason why I started writing a couple of um, tutorials that kind of helped people. Okay, great. All right, uh, John, we have a question for you. Um, it says, why is Overleaf described as free and open source when it costs to use it after a certain amount? Thanks, that's a great question. So. Um, Overleaf is free to use um, as, a, as an author. You can create as many projects as you want on the free account. You can add as many collaborators as you want on the free account. We do have a pro version that you can subscribe to or you can get through an institutional license. Um, but it's definitely you know, free to use, certainly for you know, the majority of our authors um, around the world um, get started on the free account. And it's built on um, LaTeX, which is a, a a fantastic piece of open source software that's been around for um, the past 40 years. And we are endeavoring to make things that we build on top of that, such as the, the rich comments um, feature that we have. That's fully compatible with LaTeX. So if you take your work and use it offline, um, all those comments come with it, come with the document, and you can use them if you're using LaTeX on your, on your desktop PC as well. So we're trying to make it as, as interoperable as we can. Um, and as accessible to as many people as we can as well. Okay, great. Um, and I think that is actually about all the time we have. Um, I will be uh, typing up all these questions and we'll be getting answers to these and a few others as well and sending these out to everyone. Um, but we wanted to first thank you so much to John, Helen, and Aaron for taking the time to speak with us today. And thank you to all the attendees for joining us. Uh, if you have additional questions or would like more information about Overly for your institution or want to know how do you begin or how do you start this process, that was another question that we had, uh, feel free to contact me at the email that's in your registration information or you can contact us through the Overleaf website and we're happy to provide you guys with more information about your specific institution. We can even see what kind of um, uh, Overleaf use we have uh, from your particular institution. We'd be happy to share that with you as well. So um, again, we will be sending out the questions and answers and a link to the recording shortly. Thanks again to everyone, and I hope you all have a great day.